and welcome to this MindFusion video tutorial where we will build this interactive course schedule using the JavaScript scheduler library. That's a timetable where you can create new course items and choose among three given locations and three lecturers. You can also set a reoccurrence for the lectures. In addition, we use the filtering functionality of the JS scheduler to provide the user with the ability to filter courses by the lecturer or the room. We start by creating an empty folder, which we name List Schedule. There we copy some scheduling files, which we will need. This is the JavaScript file with the library, the JS file with IntelliSense hence, and a folder Themes, where the CSS file with the standard theme that we will use is located. We have also copied a file with the license key for the tool, though you are not required to have one in order to test the full functionality of the library. Next, we will create an empty HTML page. As you see, we use Visual Studio mainly for its support of IntelliSense, which will come in handy when we start writing the JavaScript code. We name the file List Schedule and save it in our special folder. The first thing to do is to edit the web page title and add a reference to the standard CSS file with the schedule theme. Next, we will place a reference to the scheduling library and a reference to a JavaScript file that we have not yet created. Let's name it listschedule.js. This is the JS code behind file for our application. We add these references at the end of the HTML file, right before the closing body tag. Now we need an HTML div element with an ID, which will be used to render the calendar. The ID will be necessary to initialize the JS schedule object. We create a div that has a top margin of 40 pixels, and in it, we place the div for the calendar. This div will take all of the available space. Its width and height are set to 100%. Let's create now the JS code behind file. We create a new JavaScript file and add their reference to the IntelliSense file with a namespace mapping for the MindFusion. Scheduling namespace. Now we can create the calendar object. We call the constructor with the ID of the HTML div element. Let's set the calendar view to list because that's what we'll use. Finally, we call render to visualize the schedule. Let's see the result. Well, even with the little effort we've put in so far, we have a fully interactive JS schedule where users can create appointments. It looks ugly. So let's set the theme that we've referenced. We use the theme property and set it to the name of the theme standard. Let's reload the application. Now, as you can see, there is a significant difference in the calendar look. When you create an item, the form is also styled. Let's create a reoccurring appointment. Here it is. Now let's do some customization for the calendar list. We use the list settings property for that. First, we change the orientation of the list to horizontal. And we want to show four columns. Example, number of cells. Let's check how it looks. Now let's make it draw the full name of the month together with the day. In order to achieve that, we set title format. As you can see now, the header duplicates the date at the top of each column. Let's change that and make the schedule draw the day of the week under each date. We use general format. Here it is. There is a detail here. The first day of the month has its special property, 
and as you can see, it still renders the old label. We use the first day of the month format property to change that. It's okay now. Let's add some contacts to the schedule. We create three professors. We create a variable named resource. Initialize it to a new contact and see its first and last name. Finally, add it to the list with schedule contacts. Then we create a new location, in our case a room where lectures take place. It is an instance of the location class. Let's run the application. If you want to create a new item now, you have the list with the lectures and the room in the available contacts and locations. I'll just paste two more locations and we'll continue with our next task. To assign the name of the course automatically, each time an item with a given lecturer is created. We do this by handling the item creating event. In the method handler, we check to see if a contact has been selected. If so, we automatically set the subject of the newly created item to the name of a course. The ARG's object that comes as a parameter has a field for the item that's being created. Now let's see how it works. Yes, it looks fine. Once we choose a lecturer, the name of the course now appears in the item. As you see, the tooltip renders the name of the course, the time, and the professor. Let's customize the tooltip and the subject. Let's render the time before the subject, and let's make the tooltip render only the lecturer and the time. We set the description field of the item. We do this in the handle item creating method. There we take the first contact from the contacts list of the new item and assign its first and last name as a description to the item. Then we append the name of the location separated by a dash. How do we make this description appear as a tooltip? With the item settings object, we use its tooltip format property and set it to percent %d. That is the code name for take the item description and render it as a tooltip. We also wanted to render the time of the lecture before the subject. In order to do this, we use item settings title format. The title format also uses the formatting strings percentage s, percentage e, and percentage h. They stand for content from the start time, end time, and header. Note that the percentage S is followed by HH colon MM. That is how we would like the time to be rendered, full hour and full minutes. Let's check the result. It looks fine. Now let's get back to the switch statement in the handle item creating method. There you see that we assign a custom CSS class to the item that is being created. 
We open the web page and in the head section we place a style code snipped. The class item class 1 extends the standard theme CSS. The standard theme is accessible through the tag .mfp planner .standard. Then we write the .item class 1 tag and then we put .mfp item. This is the class that styles the appearance of calendar items. The only property that we set in each class is background color. Let's copy that style for the two other items and then set a new color scheme. We refresh the page and create a new item. As you see, the item has now a new color. Let's create a new item with a different lecturer. This item gets its custom color as well. Now let's make a change in the UI. Let's add three checkboxes for the three lecturers. I'll create a div element and paste the code for the first checkbox there. As you see, it's an input element of type checkbox with an ID and a value. We need the ID to create the label element for this checkbox. Let's add the other two checkboxes. The all handle, the one click event, with a method called handle click. Now we will write it. The handle click function takes an argument of type checkbox. We cycle through all items, and we filter those that have at least one contact. Then we check if the last name of the contact is the same as the value of the checkbox that sent the event. We change the visibility of that item accordingly. This way we handle both select and unselect of a checkbox. Finally, we repaint the calendar. Let's test what we've done. We create a few items, each with a different lecturer. We unselect a professor. Then another one, the items disappear. We unselect all three lecturers, no items visible. So it works as it should. Now let's add the last modification. We'll add a combo box with the rooms and filter the items not only by a lecturer, but also by location. We add a select element with an ID and label for it. The onChange event will be handled by a method called FilterLocation. This method also takes as an argument the combo box. Let's create the first option for the combo box. It will render all as text and its value will be negative one. When we append it as a child to the location combo box, now let's add the rooms for the lectures. We will do this in a code and this way we'll have the advantage that new locations will be added automatically, as well as old locations which are deleted will be removed automatically. We cycle through all locations in the calendar and take each subsequent one. Then we create a new option and set its inner HTML to the name of the calendar location. The value of the option is the index of the current location. Finally, we add the option to the combo box. Let's add the filter location method which takes as argument the select object. In it, we first clear all calendar locations. Note these are the locations of the calendar, not the schedule where we have added the rooms. Then we use the group type property of the calendar. If the first option is selected, all, in example, the value of the list is negative one. We set the group type to none. This means all items will be rendered. 
If a location was selected, we add it to the list with locations of the calendar and set the group type property to filter by locations. This means the calendar will render only those items that have a location the same as the locations added in the calendar locations list. Now let's check how the application works. We create some items. Let's see different rooms and lecturers. All works as it should. And that's the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.